What I want to do with you today is show you how I close and have closed $2,000 a month clients and higher using a really simple framework. So we're going to review a recording of an actual sales call. I record all my sales calls so I can review them later, but I kind of wanted to give you guys a bit of a behind the scenes on how we can close someone for 25K and more. We've done it at 5K a month using this framework. This call was 42 minutes long and the customer didn't even come in until about six minutes in. So you don't need your calls to be hours long. This one was closed within about 40 minutes. I'm gonna pause it, kind of comment on each individual piece. And yeah, I guess we'll just kind of jump into it. Uh, so you can see here, I do them on Zoom. That's my preferred method. I just think it's nice and easy. It's a, a quick way of doing it. I tend to get on the call a few minutes early and then make sure that the room is prepared, make sure that my connection's good. You can see this is my old <laughs> room because I've got rid of a whiteboard and all the, the kind of stuff I had behind me. And yeah, I basically spent some time waiting for our client to arrive. Oh, and it's worth pointing out that I've blurred their face. I've obviously hidden a lot of their personal and private details. So I'm not going to be exposing anything like that. And you, you won't see their name either. But this was a real customer. This was a maybe a little over a year ago when I closed this particular customer. So this particular client joined without their camera. I prefer having people join with their camera. I like doing one-on-one -on -one with their camera. You can see they come on now. Um, if they don't have their camera, I'll turn my camera off, but I'll try to match them. But I'd rather have the camera, I'd rather see them. So, so as soon as they join, pay attention to what I say. So here we go. Awesome. Okay, excellent. So thank you for, for popping on, man. I massively appreciate it. Unfortunately, I'm back to back with calls today. So we'll have to try and keep time for the time. Keep it kind, keep it kind. Okay, sure, sure. I, I love that anyway. Okay. So already what I've done is I set the parameter of saying, look, I'm busy. I've got calls. I'm back to back. I don't want to kind of just have a casual chat. I'm here to get one thing done and one thing only. And what you'll see me do now is I'll basically outline how the call is going to go. So I'm taking immediate control of the sales process. Otherwise, we tend to find that we kind of run along with the customer and I want to be in control of the sales call. Basically, I know a little bit about your business. Obviously, you and I had a, had a conversation previously, so I've got a, a pretty good understanding. But I really want to get a feel of where it is you want to get to so that we can build a bit of a plan to get there. Where you guys are now so that we can understand kind of what we're working with and then see what the roadblocks are in between so we can figure out how to navigate those. If I feel that, you know, there's a, a really good fit between what it is that we do and what it is that you're offering and I'll make an official invite to you towards the program at that point you'll get the chance to ask as many questions as you need to to understand everything it is that we're doing in order to make a decision here and on the call basically how does that it's okay so what i've done there is first of all i've had a conversation with this client already i've qualified them that only takes about eight ten minutes of just making sure as a right to continue the call that was done on a previous call and then on that call if they're qualified if they have the right budget if they've got the right needs if they have a problem that i think i can solve if i can get them good results if i like them if i kind of get on with them and that the chemistry is correct so all of these qualifiers i'll then book them in for this call which is the one you're seeing this 45 minute call and then what i also did is i basically outlined i'm going to ask you a bunch of questions i'm going to figure out what's wrong with your business what's going well and how we can help and I will make an official invite to you. And then you can ask as many questions as you want. And then we can make a decision today on the call. So I set the expectation really early on that I'm going to try and close you on this call if I feel you're correct. So let's not do the whole dance around and go, yeah, you know, we need to think about it. Uh, that's not for this type of call and I do that right at the start because occasionally this is all about qualification right you'll get people say oh I, I actually won't be able to make a decision on the call because I need my business partner now again I ask that in the qualification call but I keep qualifying I keep saying are you able to make a decision today how does that sound you can ask as many questions as you want I'll invite you onto the program I'll make an official invite I'm constantly reminding them that this is a sales call and I'm going to be making an offer to you and trying to close you and if they can't do that if they say i can't make a decision today i'll rebook i'm not interested in having a conversation with someone for them to go away and for their desire to drop off i'll just rebook and i'll say i'll tell you what let's find a better time for you when you and your business partner will be able to jump on board how does that sound and usually people are happy with that is there anyone else that needs to be on the call with us today now then yeah so again i've asked like are you the decision maker constantly qualified decision maker decision maker decision maker obviously you and i had a conversation 
Yeah, so I've I've already spoken to them. So before we kind of get into it, then, what do you think is the most pressing need in the business? Uh, the flow of uh, customers, of course. So this always happens. So I've I've basically led them in with the question. The question could be phrased as, "What would you buy?" Essentially, but I've said, "What's the pr- biggest pressing need in the business?" And he said something along the lines of the flow of clients, the flow of leads. And essentially, that there is what I will pitch against later. They have told me what they think their biggest problem is. I'm going to sell them against that biggest problem. But what also happens now is they tend to try to offer a lot of context, which is absolutely fine, but I try to hurry that along. Okay. But what I want to adding now, I want to change the course of my business. And because I, I was talking to you, and to be honest, with, uh, with Joe Benavetti as well, you know the guy. So what's interesting here as well is this client mentioned that he was going to potentially work with somebody else who I haven't heard of because there's dozens of us out there. And you can see that all I'm doing is taking notes. You can see I'm looking down. It's because I'm taking notes and I'm writing out the kind of context of what he's talking about and what his offer is. I haven't talked about what my product is once yet. At the start, I asked you, you know, what's the biggest pressing need? And you said it's the flow of clients. What do you mean by that? So what I've done there is I've asked further clarification on his problem. I essentially want him to open up and exacerbate all the problems he's got within the business. And all I'm doing is continuing to dig. Like, why is this a problem? Give me more context. Why is that important to you? Why do you think that's something we should fix? You know, if someone gets in, almost never gets out. That can be two things. They are happy with what I'm doing or, or I'm too cheap. <laughs> and that could be. I'll tell you something I should have done there is I should have laughed with him. I'm clearly concentrating too much on taking notes. I should have laughed with him. It should have been way more conversational. It's a big mistake on past Mike there. Um, he should have laughed alongside that. You can even see if it even feels a bit awkward. And the funny thing is this client is a very funny guy. So I should have paid attention to that. So essentially... Most of your work or all of your work is reliant on word of mouth. Definitely. That makes you nervous. And this is the moment like this because we, we had a lot of work, you know, and then people were, uh, there are few projects there, they are uh, stuck, you know, they're just, we need information, and, you know, they don't move on, vacations, things like, like that. And I really had, uh, uh, last week was, uh, what the fuck I'm doing, you know, we, 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 we are here with two people, three people, and, you know, it's not flowing anymore. And so what I did there was just ask him, essentially, how does that make you feel? I repeated what his problem was and asked him, how does that make you feel? If you think that there's a lot of similarities between this and counseling or therapy, you or even coaching, you would be correct. Okay. So is that something that's what you, you think maybe the fix is, is ultimately making sure that you have a, a, a lead gen and sales process in place as well? You mentioned that. I think that's the most, most uh, origin thing. So I asked him there, so do you think you need a lead generation and sales process? And I went, yeah, I think that's the most urgent thing. So he's literally told me something he would buy. So if I then say to him later on, and he told me you want a lead gen and sales process, we actually have a lead gen and uh, sales system. Does that sound like something you'd like to implement? All I'm doing is listening to what he, the problems are, listening to what he wants and saying that's something we've got. And how often are you marketing to your current? But I actually do that later. And that question was, how often are you marketing to your current clients? So I'm I'm trying to uncover all of these issues where what I actually want them to do is to say, or to think like, oh yeah, how often am I doing it? I don't know, once a week, maybe once a month, or maybe I don't do it at all. And internally they're then going, shit, that might be something I need to start doing. Little time. What is time to time? Once in a month, something like that. Okay. Um, and, and those calls are service calls, they're sales calls, discovery calls, and discovery calls and service calls. So let's talk about where it is that you want to get to. Last time we spoke, the goal was to basically bring you guys to 30,000 euros a month. So again, I'm, I'm constantly trying to get to tangible numbers. I'm constantly trying to get to you know, 30K, 50K, 50K a client. Numbers that people can point at on a report are really, really powerful because if I say I can help them get to that, that's usually a really strong buying signal because it feels more tangible to them. And you're currently around 10 to 15? Uh, about, yeah. Okay. It involves also a lot of cost. It's not revenue. It's not clean revenue till to 15. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the, the, just the overall revenue of the business, right? This is overall revenue of the business. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Yeah. I seem really stiff on this call. I don't know why. I really like this particular client. I really like him. So I don't know why I'm so stiff, but it, you know, it comes across on camera. Now I still close this client, but it's something to be aware of. 
if you look at my body language now and how I'm talking to you guys, I'm way more kind of casual and relaxed. But on camera, you can see I'm stressed about something. I have a feeling I know what it is <laughs> based on the date that I can see. But yeah, it's just an interesting thing to note. I have an idea of what your profit margins are. <laughs> Somewhere about 20%, I guess. That really have to be worked on because I feel that the costs are, are killing me right now. And that's that, that's what makes me nervous. And what kind of impact is that having on you then if the, if the costs are a problem? Yeah, I'm not uh, sometimes not myself. You can't be creative if you have another, another pressing things in your head, you know, that really need to happen. Okay. And what do you think is at the root cause of that profit margin being lower than you'd like? Uh, maybe the sales approach, maybe things getting out to what we calculate. We have a recalculation there, but you know, we always have to make some deals with the client because you promise something and you, you can't get much over it because, yeah, this is what we, we discuss. Sometimes call some work out of scope, yeah. So what I did there was I said, tell me more about that. And again, I'm just digging deeper. I'm essentially just asking the same pro the same question over and over again. Okay, why? what's the biggest problem? And then I might ask like, why is that a problem? Or can you expand on that? And we're trying to, we're doing two things. First of all, we're bringing all the relevant problems to the surface. And also, this is how you develop rapport with someone. I think there's a misnomer that rapport comes in the first five seconds. That can certainly help, but actually these shared kind of communications that's how you build rapport because i get to know their business they get to know me but i'm also just constantly giving them space notice how i haven't given a single piece of advice yet at all and, and now i address it L lately i address everything hey we didn't discuss this it will cost you so much okay but years before i i did it like you know okay we do this we we go for it blah 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 the the general mistake uh, all the good people do yeah yeah. So something you also mentioned, uh, I wrote down here that you wanted a clean flow to the business. What did you mean by that? Let's talk about that. I, I could be smiling way more of this. I'm way too serious. Again, I think I know why. At the time, I thought, obviously, I'm friendly, smiling, but it's clear here that, and he's also constantly looking at the top of my head, which I don't like. That's actually something we did rectify in one of our calls, but um, there's a lot here that you can see and learn from, from my mistakes, right? I'm not good at doing videos as you do. I, I'm not a speaker as you are. Yep. But if I have the people on the phone and they ask me anything about the, what they have to do, I can get them over. There's not a problem at all. Uh, so I, I can say my still speeches are okay. But, you know, like, I have some, some testimonials, but not like, you know, video testimonials. So uh, let me ask then, what's your current sales process if you wanted to go out and find a new client what would you do this is a killer question by the way if you ask this question on a call they'll basically tell you everything that's wrong that you can fix especially as a marketing and sales agency what's your current sales process look like if you had to go get a new client today what would you do most of the time i get the call i make an offer and that will be uh, accepted and, uh, or not. So, that's it. so you, you literally don't have a process for saying, we're going to go out and find new customers? No, not at all. You say when you do get someone on a call, or is it a brief word of mouth? See, what I should have done there that I didn't do is I should have said, does that sound like something that would be good to have in the business? And they go, yeah, I'd love that. So I said, what's your current sales process look like? They said, we don't really have one, essentially. So I said, so you basically don't have a process to be able to go out and get new clients and leads when you need them. And they go, no, we don't. I should have said there and then, does that sound like something that would be useful or valuable for the business? And they go, yeah, and I can write that down. And again, they're just telling me what they would buy you yourself have a phone conversation or like over zoom what what does that look like are there multiple calls is there a proposal can it can be a or a zoom call to get to know each other i'm asking of course about uh, uh, the current state to where they are what they need from me and then uh, i make a proposal like like written proposal what do you want the business to look like and where do you want your role to be in the business what would be like an ideal scenario for how people are working around you i would really like to to uh, to be in contact with my clients you know okay. to 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 make the calls to make everything it is you're hesitant or you're worried about 
about not doing the work and being involved in the work because you don't know what would be happening with it. You don't feel like you could pass that over to somebody else. Am I understanding that right? Well, I thought it. So this is a really important piece. I think we're afraid to get things wrong on calls, but at the same time, we have a tendency to want to kind of lead the client. And that question was a clarification question for me. I didn't really particularly understand where he was coming from in terms of what one of the problems was within the business. So I rephrased it in a way that I understood. And he has said, actually, no, that's not correct. And I'd rather learn that now than when I'm trying to close them. So when I say, you know, have I understood that correctly? That's my way of saying, have I understood why this is important or valuable to you? You know, I have one employee. And, and another programmer that works for me. But there are some things that, in the way it is now... I just want to say, we're halfway through this call, we're 20 minutes in, and I haven't given a single piece of advice. I've just asked questions, and I've just listened. It is my business, yep. okay? At this moment, I'm not replaceable, and that that happens to tell you some way. Yep. Or partially change, you know, like, yeah. Why do, you th- why do you say that? Because that will uh, create for me more time to create and, and of course, spend more time with the things I love to do. Well, I just wanted to talk about that. So how many hours are you working at the moment then? So a lot of these questions are what I call push-pull or tension questions. They're basically, they're broken into three categories. What are you doing now? What do you want to be doing? And what do you think your roadblock is? So what you are doing now is a really good way of understanding whenever they've given you a goal. So if someone says, I want to scale to 10 million, you go, okay, great. What are you doing now? And it sounds really obvious, but we often don't equate those two. And I really like to get the tension between them. And then what I'll typically ask is, okay, you want to do 10 million. You're currently at 1 million. What are you doing to fix that? What's the biggest roadblock? And they'll say, oh, I think we have a problem with leads or I'm too busy or we've tried advertising. And we basically in the middle get how they've tried to construct the bridge. So they're being open and showing what's going wrong and what's not working within the business, which again is an incredibly important sales tool. So those tension questions, where do you want to be? Where are you now? What are you doing to fix it? Or what's the problem? Those are really important to understand. And what I do as well, is those will all be broken down into subcategories. I know vaguely the areas that I can help with, leads, clients, sales, revenue, profit, hiring, time management. So I've got all of those types of categories that I can help with. Sometimes called currencies, I call them functions or tokens. And so I'll specifically say, what's your revenue at now? Where do you want your revenue to be? And what do you think the problem is or the roadblock or how have you tried to fix it? I'm not going to ask him, what's your health and fitness regime like? Because it's something I can't help with. Or I won't say to him, how are you getting speaking gigs right now? How many speaking gigs you want? Because that's not really something I can help with. So I'm purposefully asking questions within categories that I can fix to open up the problems and the roadblocks and the, again, those tension questions, those push-pull questions within categories that I know I can solve. So I'm basically building up a database of all the things that I can fix and sell against. A day? A day. If we could reduce that number down, what would you rather be doing instead? I have no idea. <laughs> Spend more time with the, with the low ones, yeah. I guess. What else? Uh, I think create new things, create new products. Notice there how quiet I was. I'll ask the question, like, what else? And I'll, I'll bask in the seconds of silence. Here we go. Nice bit of silence just to illustrate it's not the end of the world. So I'll ask a question and then I'll give them the breathing space to answer it. Being positive is not the left. Yep. And I agree. Yeah. It's hard work. It's hard work keeping it up. Yeah. Sure. Okay. I just want to do a little bit of quick maths here. In order to get you to 30,000 a month, how many new clients do you think you need to bring on board then? And what I've essentially asked there is, this is what I call a realism check. If you want to get, okay, let's say their goal is to get to a million and they're currently at 500,000. I've said to them, well, how are we going to get there? And they might say, well, our average product is $500. So I'm like, so we need to sell a thousand of these 500 products, but you've only sold a thousand previously and you want to do it within a year. That's just not realistic. Now, what that does is open up either, well, there's other strategies that we could use, like increasing their prices, creating new products or whatever it might be, or temper their expectations and say, that's just not going to happen. So this is the point here when we start to get into their numbers, where you'll often find some big, big gaps that just aren't going to happen based on what they are suggesting. And in order to make sure that we're setting up expectations as realistically as possible, if it turns around, they go, we want to get to a million, we're currently 800,000. 
And I'd say, okay, that gap of 200,000, if we were to find you 10, 20K clients, you would be happy with that? They go, oh my God, that'd be fantastic. I go, great. Whatever price I give them, as long as it's less than the 200,000, they're going to be happy with. So this is where you begin to understand where you can remove objections around the pricing because you're anchoring it against something real and realistic that also sets expectations as well. Because I'm not good in packaging, that's where I need someone like you. So if we could show you how to package that, justify the price, sell that, have other people delivering it. So it's not just you doing the work all the time. That would be something worth talking about. Okay. So, so there was a yes there. I should have really got a confirmed yes, but I think the, there's a little bit of delay as well. All I ask there is, so if I could show you how to dot, 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 and I just picked out some of those top points. The question I asked before that was actually, why do you need help from someone like me? Why are you looking to talk to someone like me? And again, they'll tell you because I need help packaging a high ticket offer or selling via email marketing. Great. And if I could show you how to sell via email marketing and increase your offers, would that be something we should talk about? And they go, yeah. Okay, great. This is getting to the point now where with 25 minutes, I haven't given them a single piece of advice yet. I've just asked them what their problems are. And you'll see now I'll start to move into the close. Essentially, all of that was qualification. I haven't tried selling anything yet. Ultimately, we want to get to 30K a month, which we could do. I actually think you can get there within... 90 days. I think you could be there um, by the start of 2023, personally, if you were to, to jump on this now. You talk about having a clean flow and a lot of your conversation is about process and structure. So I don't know if you caught that. I remember I caught this at the time. When I talked about getting to 30k, he almost sort of seemed a bit hesitant. He was like, yeah, I guess. But as soon as I started talking about structure and process, he was nodding his head and was like, yeah, that's what I need. Now, hopefully... I lean into that one because that was the signal, right? That was the positive signal. But I have a feeling I go down the other way. Even though I do manage to close him, um, I have a feeling I end up going the other way, which I shouldn't have. I should have leaned into the things that he was more positive about. We talk about that, but there's a lot that we can do around that. So I'm 100% on board on that. Talk to me about then, what is it that you think is standing in your way at the moment? What are the roadblocks? I, I'm just overwhelmed about okay. everything. When you say overwhelmed, I know that feeling well. You know, again... What's stopping you? Why can't you get there yourself? And essentially what that, that question actually is, why would you have to buy from someone like me? Or why would you have to buy from me? If they say I'm overwhelmed or I've tried doing it with ads or I've done it another way, that's them saying to me, I've tried all these ways and I'm stuck, but I need external help. So that question, which is essentially, what have you tried already or what do you think the roadblocks are? What's standing in your way? Everything they sell, say to you there are the things that you're actually going to help them overcome. Those, those are really strong sales points that you can sell against. The question that you're actually asking is, why would you have to buy from someone like me? Very powerful. What is it that you're overwhelmed? Just not being able at this moment, at, at least it's not the way I want it to be. I, I see there are a lot of crap on the market that sells us hell. Yep. And I know the value we can provide. And in some way, I can't package it. I can't get it out there. And maybe it have to be also, doesn't have to do with, with my focus, with my uh, way of doing things. As you see, I'm kind of chaotic. I'm a self, uh, I would say that, self-educated. Yes, sir. So we live like this about 16 years now. <laughs> okay. Go. So, all right. That's a long time. So something there that came up, it's usually a question that I ask, which is also how long have you been stuck here? And he said 16 years in his particular case. But that's also a question I like to ask when they say, we want to get to a million, we're at 800,000. What's standing in your way? Oh, we don't know leads. We don't know sales. We have a good package, blah, 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 blah. What do you think is standing in your way? What's preventing you from getting there yourself? We're just overwhelmed. We don't have the knowledge. Fantastic. How long have you been stuck there? Again, really, really powerful tool for overcoming objections. If someone says a year, you go, you've been like this for a whole year. Someone says two years, you've been like this for a whole, two whole years. That's a long time. Someone says six months. You've been here 25 weeks, six months. That's a long time. Go, yeah. I'm constantly looking for what reasons for them to buy, because if I don't come up with reasons for them to buy, they won't come up with reasons for themselves to buy. If someone remains in this business, they are far further, of course. You know, till uh, three years or three years ago, I never treat my business like a business. I was really happy to see my kids growing. I was working from home. You know, enough was enough. 
yeah, I spend a lot of time with the Wikidos, but yeah, they are, you know, out now. Yeah. They are, the, the youngest is 20, so we remain a lot of time. So, so, so thank you for going through that with me. I've got a very good idea of where your business So I'm now beginning to start the close. This is now where I'm going to start closing the customer. This is and what we would work on. Ultimately, what we're actually looking to do is get you into a position of feeling like you're in control and in powered of the business to grow us and grow our revenue and make sure that we're also profitable but right now you are in too many areas which is like you said overwhelming you with input essentially and because we don't have a clear structured almost boring process that we're following for the three different aspects, sales, delivery, and, and running the business. That's essentially what is preventing you from, from growing the business that you want. Did I miss anything there? No. <laughs> so what I did there, summarize his problems, essentially tell him like a quick version story of what he's experiencing. And I said, did I miss anything? Because if I did, if he goes, you know what? It's not really about process or sales. What it's really about is selling the business. It means I've missed something. And at that point, it's critical. I'll go back and I'll say, okay, tell me more about that because I've obviously missed something. But hopefully, based on almost half an hour of questioning, I've really dug up and got a really clear idea of what it is I'm going to fix, how I'm going to fix it, uh, and how they're going to benefit. Okay, so you're yep. confident that I've understood where you are and what the situation yeah, you're in, yeah? definitely. All right, good. So again, I'm asking, like, so you're confident that I've understood that? Yeah, yeah. You, you think I've got a good understanding? Yeah. This is all demonstrating that trust. And it sounds a bit clinical, but in my experience, even for people who hate, and this is not, this is obviously extremely soft selling. No matter how soft your selling skills are, getting the person to say and saying to them, look, the onerous is this of, me, of understanding is on me. Have I understood this? Do you feel I've understood this? Do you feel I've got a clear picture of this? Do you feel listened and heard and validated in what you've talked about and that's extremely important i just want to do a bit of a check-in because i know that these calls can be very like you know draining what's been most valuable for you so far doesn't have to be anything big you know the, the way of understanding things if you can answer simple difficult questions so that means you know what you're talking about so so that question's actually taken from michael bunk a steiner's seven coaching questions or breaking the coaching habit asking someone what's been most valuable and again it sounds like why on earth would someone say that but i promise you on calls like this people go oh i just feel extremely validated or i like how you've listened i've just been able to get all my problems out i feel like i've been able to get this kind of off my chest again you're just getting a little bit more confirmation that they feel validated they feel heard you've begun building a bit of rapport if people try to get around the block i'm i'm done you and i are on the same page there so i've been asking a lot of questions um and I feel like I've got a really good handle of where you are. So what I want to do is kind of switch roles a little bit and let you ask the questions. So where would you like to go from here then? So what I'm doing now is I'm completely flipping this and I'm not going to pitch to him. This is what's so different about my sales process and what I've said since year dot. I don't sell to people. I've now flipped it and said, where would you like to go from here? And this is where they are able to ask as many questions as they want. And typically what they want to know is, well, what advice would you give me? How would you fix this? What are you offering and what's the price? Those are typically the four questions. And I'll just go through and answer those questions. Okay. You know, just uh, start with the first steps and, and go towards the right. We'll start with, the beginning, with, with what you think is the beginning. So what do we do next? Great. So I'm a big fan of just solving a few things at a time. I like bite-sized chunks. Yeah. The top three problems that I think that you are facing at the moment is, as you mentioned, overwhelm and a lack of not multiple processes, but I think there's one process you're missing in the business. The second piece is packaging and selling and justifying a high ticket, standardized, productized service that you can work on repeat that will also be more profitable for you. And also scaling below the time, 100%, 100% systemized and productized. You know, that is, that's what I define as scalable, 100%. Yep, absolutely. And the third piece is that is no system whereby you can go out and attract new clients by yourself without having to rely on word of mouth. Does that sound about right? Absolutely. To start with. So all I've said there is 
I've given him the top three problems. Now, again, looking back on this, what I should have done is give him a problem and then checked in with him. So I should have said, I think you're missing two or three critical processes in the business that are holding you back and I want to fix those first. Does that sound about right? And they go, yeah. So I actually want to break them down. For this one, for some reason, I did all three, but I'm still getting his buy and I'm still saying, does that sound about right? Are you comfortable with how I've laid out what the top three problems are? Definitely. Where would you like to go from here then? Start with the packages. Yeah, cool. Excellent. So again, they're now in control. I think even on some calls I say, look, I'm going to give control of this over to you and I, I want to kind of help you out as much as I can. So I'm simply saying to them, does that sound about right? I then ask them, are you comfortable with how I've like laid this out? They go, yeah. That means that they've bought into how I'm planning on fixing it. They're essentially writing the proposal for me. And the third piece I then says, okay, so where do you want to go from here? Or what's next do you think? But what that then informs me is where they're thinking in the sales process. And typically they're going to start asking about prices and how, what the actual fixes are. And they can start visualizing the solution, right? Has a system called the escape plan. And that's what I think you need to put into your business. The escape plan isn't for you. It's for your customers. And what that does is deliver a scalable process-driven, high-ticket product, which is unique to the marketplace. It's easier to sell, and it also delivers recurring revenue. I would be aiming for 2,000 euros a month. That's what I would be aiming to build alongside yourself. And what it also does is give a set standard series of smaller processes whereby anyone you bring on board or your current team they are able to execute against and you know the customer is getting what they paid for without you having to do and check the work and deliver on it. Does that make sense? No, fairly. So during this point, they're super engaged. I'm throwing a lot of information at him, but you can see that all I really did was say, so we want to fix the processes right. I have this system or this method or this model or this, you know, something. I have a product that helps with that particular thing. And it gives all these benefits and all those benefits are things that they've said they've wanted. And then again, I've just asked him, does that make sense? Have, have you understood that? I go, yes. Be careful not to try and overload them with information at this point. It's very typical at this point, people will reel off an entire pitch and they're not gonna listen to it. They're gonna listen to the pieces they're interested in. So I've said to him now, do you feel comfortable with that? And I'll do that two or three more times. I'll only sell three things in the whole package. Second piece, dealing with overwhelm, a lack of processes. A lot of business owners feel that they need to be the ones who write the processes and the standard operating procedure, and that's completely false. So what I want to build in place with you is something that we call a million dollar drill. And these are going to be the five pieces that align within your business that everyone needs to know. Even with a small team, we need to have these five pieces in place. And the most important of which is telling your team what you your role is in the business and making sure that they can protect that i think i'm using a little bit too much jargon here i don't think i've practiced my pitch enough here i think i'm using too much jargon i'm also speaking for way too long i could have shortened that down i could say so the second piece was helping you scale your revenue we have a process called the million dollar drill and what that does is get five critical categories in alignment that you have to have, even for a small business, in order to get to that next level of revenue. In your case, fifteen to 30,000. Does that make sense? They go, yeah. There's five things I need to get in alignment to get an extra 15K a month. I should have shortened this. I have to do something in the business that is not my core role. My team stop me from doing it. They say, nope, you can't do that. We'll take care of that for you. I'm talking way too much here. That's how we deal with overwhelm. We don't deal with overwhelm by adding more things like processes and advice. We deal with overwhelm by removing things and stripping things away to their absolute core. Does that make sense? Is that fair? Sure. Yeah. And the third and final piece is I want to build a sales map with you in order for you to be able to log in on a Monday or whenever you want to work and say, great, these are the five people we're going to go after this week. We're going to have 25 new leads come in. We're going to have conversations with eight of them. We're going to try and close two of them. These are the people we need to follow up with. We have a process that we would share with you and build alongside. It's about this point, the customer's going to start thinking, how much is this going to cost? Bearing in mind, I'll come to that in a bit, but a lot of these shouldn't be shocks to them. I should have qualified him earlier and said, 
Look, we have programs that range from you know twenty thousand dollars up to eighty thousand dollars a year. If we could find something within that range, how does that sound to you? And they'll go, yeah, that seems to be okay. So hopefully, none of this is going to be a big shock to him. In order to check in with where are your next sales coming from and how are you going to sell to them without lots of back and forth and negotiation and worrying about pricing. Does that make sense? Yes. Are you comfortable with that plan that I think we should put in place? I am. So what I also do usually, the reason I've moved the Zoom over is because I usually have a whiteboard come up. I might do it in a second, I can't remember, but I like to draw that plan out with them. But I think I started doing it How a different stage. How confident are you in what it is that I've outlined there? How confident I am with what we just discussed? Yeah. If I put that in place, yeah. 100%. Sick. All right, cool. Buy a sick, okay, and get started. Cool. Okay, awesome. All right, well, but, 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 we have this uh, financial, financial uh, uh, quest, of course. Yeah? Yep. Tell me about that. Yeah, sure. Do you have any other questions while we're kind of, you know, circling around this area? But I think this is exactly what I need. So he's already bought, all right? Now we're just moving on to the price. And he feels funny about it, I don't. So I want you to pay attention how I deal with the price. What would, would like, anyway? If we can pick, you know, the low-hanging fruits right now, then will be not be a problem to pay you and everybody else. Yeah. Let me. Let's, so let's let's about this. So first of all, this is a twelve-month program. We're going to be with you for twelve months, but not just you. I want you, and I want two members of your team as well. Now, if you only have one person to bring on board right now, that's fine. But this is not just us teaching or talking to you, and we'll talk about that. We want to work with your team as well. All right. So. Everything that we would support you with, we would support them with because we're actually supporting the business. Does that make sense? So you yeah. actually got three yeah. licenses, right? The first thing I want to put in place is a plan. And this is where we're going to work one-on-one -on -one with you for a little bit. And there's going to be a little, a little bit of self-paced work to basically build a 90-day plan. Uh, I don't think I've got any worksheets here with me, but this is basically where we are literally going to plan out in 90 days. How are we going to get you from X? up to Y. Now, what I should have done realistically is I should have actually just told him the price. But what, what I was trying to do is I was trying to make sure that he knew that this is a 12 month like contract, that it was like a one off cost or something that we're going to be working with you for a year in the idea that obviously we continue to work with you down the line. And typically what people really want to know is, well, okay, well, how does that work? Like, How do we work together? So while the price is important and we obviously get to that, it's also important that he understands literally how we work and what will happen when he signs up. Step by step to the point where it almost seems dull, but you'll know every day, every week, what you need to do to log in, complete the work or join a call or implement or talk to us or have us come on board or whatever, whatever it is. Does that make sense? Yes. The next piece is the tools. We have got hundreds, possibly even thousands of resources, everything from worksheets all the way through to entire process documents for how to run a sales campaign and a sales call and how to build. You mentioned that you don't have a funnel. We have an agency funnel. The difference though, is we want to give you the right tool at the right time. So any time in your plan that we'll be building alongside you, we're like, right, this is the first piece. We will give you that piece. We'll make sure your team understands about it. They can move on. And when we're done with that, we can move on to the second piece. And that's when we give you the second piece. And like I said, it's not just worksheets. There's everything from email campaigns to entire reporting pieces of software and content creation pieces. Does that make sense? Yeah. Any questions about that so far? No. And the third and final piece is support. When you get stuck, so essentially what I do here is this is how I sell everything. Tell them here's the plan, here's the tools that we're going to give you and here's the support that we're going to run through. And this is super generic. This doesn't really change with any client or any product even. And you will get stuck and we have to just admit that that's part of the process. You are never more than one message away from getting support. Either we have regular calls, we've had, we have them on a Thursday at multiple time zones for anyone to join, including yourself or your team, where you can get in touch with me or our coach, Kate. We have a private members area where you can post for advice. You can get in touch with me, get in touch with our support team. You can get in touch with our technical team. I can't guarantee that we'll know what the solution is immediately, but I promise you, 
if you even just say, we even have occasionally people just literally post the word help, let us coach the answer out of you. Let us draw the answer out of you and give you the support you need. Or your team, for example, sometimes your VA or your developer might come in and say, hey, I'm unsure how to solve this. We have not only our team, but also you've got all of the other agency owners in there as well. Some of whom are ahead of you, some of whom are a little bit behind you, but you know, this is where we get support to make sure you don't feel so isolated. Does that make sense to you? Side? Sure. Any questions about this? No. Great. So it's a 12 month program. We give you 12 months access. It's 2000 US dollars per month. Okay. So you said, I say, here's how long we're going to be working with you. We think this is going to be a nine month project. It's a 12 month project. There's sometimes I tailor that a little bit. And then I say it's 2000 a month, which is 24 grand overall. And then I just let the silence sit in while they kind of digest that. And then usually they have a couple of more questions about how it works. The way you see the business right now, how fast I can get this 2000 back, oh, you know? Within 30 days. So this is the next piece. Yeah. We have a 90 day love it or leave it policy. So yeah. you go through our plan, join the calls and implement, and you haven't at least paid back what our program is within 90 days. Or even if you just think the program sucks, Tell us, we'll refund you every single penny and we can part ways as friends. That's over 90 days and we've literally, literally never had anyone take us up on that. I love to hear that. Where do you want to go from here? Okay, where are we going to get started? Let's get started today. So we have a call at two o'clock. Which... So that's the close there. So I basically now I'm just going to take payment from him. I'm going to say, what's your credit card number? Take the first 2K payment. And that's the close. Where do you want to go from here? They go, let's get started. That's the close. That's as complex as the close it needs to get. Would you like, if, if you feel that they're not saying that exact question, you can always say, would you like to get started? They go, yeah, fantastic. What's your long credit card number? And I'm obviously not going to show this bit because there's a lot of credit card information. So hopefully guys, you've seen that as a sales process, it's relatively low touch. And that was something around 2K a month. And the customer was the one who said to me, this sounds great, let's go. I don't want you to overthink the process. I don't want you to overthink like you have to be great at sales. And the important part is I actually show you the sales process in this video here. So if you want to get kind of the overall structure of how I run one of these calls so that you can do it yourself and not just use this kind of out of context, use this training here and you can go ahead and watch how to build a sales call that allows you to sell without a hard close or without turning objections or anything like that. So go ahead and watch that video right there.